this is what I want to uh, do today. I want to create these shapes. And well, it's a challenge because, especially this one, because it's curved. So we have to create curved walls and it's not a, a circle. So it's like a curve. So it doesn't have any shape. I don't know, but uh, it doesn't have any shape that you can do. Okay, it's a circle, it's a half circle or it's an ellipse. No, it's, I don't know, it's a random curve, I think. And this is, this has straight walls, but we have the, the famous egg here. And finally, mm, we have a tilted, it's not a tilted roof, it's a tilted floor. When we have a tilted roof, uh, with this option attached to roof, uh, we can turn a flat wall into a tinted, uh, tilted wall. But when it comes to floors, uh, this option doesn't work. Okay, so we cannot attach a wall, especially a wall that is uh, curved to a tilted floor. This is what we're going to do today. It's not easy. I think Revit should be, Revit developers uh, should make things easier for users. And I'll show you how to do it. Maybe there are other ways to do it, but I'll show you how I, I usually do these kind of things. Uh, then we are going to because this there are other walls here. So these are the toilets, and there are other walls. But it's uh, so we will end up modeling all these elements, and we will be done with the with the model today. And then we will have a couple of weeks to prepare the final presentation, and we will try to do things like that. Okay, we will try to use colors, different backgrounds. And we will end up uh, creating renderings and uh, section perspectives with shadows, without shadows, uh, using different colors. Okay, we will start preparing the presentation. So the building is challenging because it's not a regular building, but I think it's a good excuse to learn a lot of things. Um, so let's start with Revit now. Um, I am, um, this is uh, level 10. So on level 10, you see that if I select this, I don't know, in this building, I would, uh, for all the views, I would use the same thing that I'm using on level zero. Okay, so I will uh, use the dark or a black hatch in all the section the elements. Uh, well, here it's only the structural elements, but we can do the same uh, with the rest of the elements. Okay, let's do that. So we can go to visibility graphics and everything that is section, uh, and what is this? It's the, uh, wait, here the floors were hidden. So I want to highlight the floors, the roofs and the walls. Okay, so everything I am selecting walls and I overwrite, well, I overwrite, I'm, I'm using a cut patterns. Okay, so in this cut pattern, I overwrite and I make it solid and black. And I do the same with, this is the wall, then I have to do the same with the roof. Solid, black, and the floor. Uh, previously, I have done it with the columns. Okay, so now I apply. Okay, and now everything that is section, it's black. So that, uh, especially when we have slopes or ramps like this, it helps me understand uh, what I'm doing. And it helps me understand that there's a column here that I didn't copy. I'm going to copy this column. Here. And is there, yes, so there's another column here that is missing. I'm going to copy this one. Uh, okay. 
I'm going to do the same with level 10. So on level 10, I have to go to visibility graphics and then I have to select, uh, if I have columns, I have to do this, override, solid, black. Uh, I have to do that with floors. Finally, walls. Okay, so now you can understand that this is the slope. This is the, well, this is a slope first, then we have this flat or horizontal the floor and now it goes up again and this black line is the cut through the slope and here we have columns probably we need more columns but well i don't know we'll figure it out later uh, so here what i would do uh, and then here we have level 20. yeah so i think I'm, I, we're going to work on level 20 because that will be uh if i use the shaded what if we yeah well I'm going to use this without shadows and uh, on level 20 I don't know if I should work on level 10 or level 20 uh, because on level 10 I have this let me find out this is level 10 Okay, so on level 10, we are, yes, yeah, so the cut line should be here. Okay, I'm going to use level 20 because I want to uh, create a wall between this, this floor and this roof here. Okay, so there will be walls here and there will be uh, curved walls. So I'm going to use level 20. And I want to trace because, uh, well, I can make it up, but uh, let's trace it. So let's go to this file. I want, uh, this is, that would be level 10. You see that we have this, the, this cut line here. So that would be level 10. That would be level 20 because we see uh, the walls. Uh, but I have to rotate it because this is north and this is south. Okay, so I click here, Control C. I copy this because first I need to create from uh, um, a picture. So I'm going to use Photoshop. Well, maybe using Photoshop in this is too much. We could we could be using just a paint, the default uh, windows. And now I'm going to save it. And I want to picture. So this is uh, level 20. Okay, and now I can drag this level 20 here. Um, as you can see, if we place this here, uh, it's hidden by the floor itself. So there are two things we can do. We can either use wireframe or if we use a solid or hidden line, uh, we can move this. Now you see that it's in the background. We can move it to the foreground and then we see the, so what do we want? Uh, I don't know. 
I think it's better if we have this in the background and uh, we have a wireframe. Yeah, I think in this case, it will be better. And now we have to, uh, we need to find uh, references because we need to scale this, it's not at scale. Uh, so what is the reference? So here we have a column and as you can see, we have these two column lines, this one and this one. And we have these two grid lines, this and this, okay? So we can move this Now this grid line is matching these lines we have here. Uh, this column probably will be on this point. Okay, so let's move this leftwards. And this column will be just at this intersection. And now we have this reference line that should be uh, matching here. So we can always use a model line And now we can scale. Uh, so this green line has to be here because this is the distance between these two grid lines, between, between these two columns. So I can select the, the picture. I can, I can, uh, where is the scale? Here. And now this is the first point. The second point is my green line. And the third point is this. Now I can get rid of this green line. And kind of, yes. So this grid line is matching with these uh, columns. Okay. Uh, and now we have to trace this shape and this shape. Mm -hmm. So we have to trace it, but uh, let's see how accurate uh, we can be. Uh, we can start using walls. I don't want a curtain wall, so let's use a generic eight inch wall. And I'm going to trace this. I'm going to start on level 20. And then uh, I'm going to trace this shape and then we will see uh, where we are and uh, uh, what we can do when we are uh, using the 3D view. Mm. We can start uh, here. And now we need um, a curve. So what options do we have here? We have an arc. We have another arc, the center, start, partial ellipse, fillet. Okay, I need this tangent and arc. So I'm going to do this. No. Well, first, this was is a straight one. And now when we have this, we can start using the tangent this one, tangent and arc. And now this is my next point. And as you can see here, we are, I am creating like a curve. I click here and then I have another there. And I can finalize Well, this is something that we have to understand. I told you that we are teaching architecture here. We are not teaching Revit. Uh, why do we have this shape? And in architecture, we have recipes. When we are designing things, it's like, okay, I have to solve this. How can I do that? And I'm creating a shape and uh, it's not a circle. It's not, uh, so it's a shape and I need to enter uh, that place. How can I do it? Okay, so that's the solution. So 
so you don't have to think about it. If you have a shape like this and you need the entrance to this place, the entrance is always like that. So we have like two curves and then there's an opening here. It's not a door, for sure we have a door. And here we have emergency exits, okay? But the main entrance to this place is not through, I don't uh, have a curved wall and I open the door and, and that's it. It deserves something, something more. And so I'm going to show you here. So imagine that we are creating uh, this out of the building. So we see on level zero, I am creating a wall. And again, first, and then we have the tangent. Okay, so I have a wall like this. And then I go to the 3D view. We're going to make it back to level 14. Okay, so how do I enter a space like this? For sure, you can go to door, you can place a terrible door here, and that's it. Is this the entrance? No, it's not. The entrance is something different. So on level zero, here we have another curve. So we have another wall. And then you can start straight line. And then this tangent. And now we close it with a straight line. So this is the entrance. So this is the entrance. And what's between uh, this and this? Uh, there's a different material, uh, usually glass. So if we go to level zero again, here we can insert a curtain wall. That makes sense. Uh, we have a wall, we have a different wall, and the entrance to that space, it's uh, something different. It's not a door, it's an opening. Yeah, here we can open a door. And by the way, there's a way to insert uh, doors in curtain walls. Uh, we can go to architecture, door, we only have this uh, door here, but we, if we insert the family, insert family here, you see that we have curtain. No, we have doors. Where's that door? So here we have door for a curtain double glass wall. This is the storefront. So you can insert that family. allow me to insert this one. Right. Okay. Revit cannot load this one. I don't know. Uh, maybe this is a uh, Revit 2021. Anyway, uh, then you can open a door on this uh, storefront wall. But that's the right way to, to enter a, a place like that. So please, if you are uh, creating weird shapes, you need a door, you need an entrance to that building, do not insert the traditional Revit door and do not insert the traditional Revit window. Okay? It doesn't make any sense. So you have to figure out how to enter here. And where does it come from? Is it because uh, Renful has invented this or 
because I tell you to do that. No, everybody does it. Uh, if we go to uh, the uh, image. I'm not going to ask you who Le Corbusier was, or if you know who Le Corbusier was. I take for granted that you know him. If you don't, uh, you have a trouble, and you have to Google uh, this guy because this is the father of modern architecture. And well, I remember that I visited when I was young. I visited this building, this nice building in India. And probably next year, we will try to model this building because we can learn a lot of things. Anyway, the, the thing is that the plan, okay, we have a weird shape here. And look at the entrance, it's the same. Okay, so we have a curve. And the entrance is like this. So you hold this element and then here you have the entrance. So every time you have a, a shape like that, don't think, uh, oh, uh, what shall I do to enter this shape or this building or this whatever, uh, you have it. Okay, so it's uh, it's always uh, the same uh, recipe. And then there, uh, if you look at this, There is always something that works well. Okay. One, two. Okay. Look at the structure. The structural elements don't have anything to do with the partitions. Uh, so that's another principle of modern architecture that usually uh, works well. Okay. So these are the structural columns, the, those circles, and they are not touching interior partitions. So that's another uh, principle of design that works well. And the third one is this uh, bristle or this way to uh, prevent sun from entering the building, which is, but we will speak about this uh, other. Anyway, next time that you are addressing a shape like that and you don't know how to enter this shape or this building, that's the, the solution. You have to enter you have to create this distance between these two walls, and this is the entrance to that space. And it goes well because this is what you need. So you have a curved element, and the entrance is not perpendicular to, to the element. It's just following this curve. So it's like natural. So it's the natural way of entering this distance. OK. But now we are uh, working with Revit. And in Revit, I have created this wall, and then I will create the other one. But now I'm going to work with this. I want to go to the 3D view and see what I have done. Okay, this is the wall here. At what level we are? Okay, so we start on level 20. These are the walls. And is it unconnected? Uh, well, uh, the top is uh, on the right place, but the problem is the, uh, this. Um, can we attach top base? No, we can't. Uh, so this is the straight line. I can start on level 10. And then I can go up to level 30. Okay, so this is a straight wall. It goes from level 10 up to level 30. Can we do the same with the rest of the walls? Okay, let's do it. So let's select this and start on level 10 and then go up to level 30. Yeah, but now here we have the issue. So we have the issue that uh, here we have the slope or we have the ramp. Let me use the hidden line. Okay, so here, yeah, what happens here? Since this is a straight wall, 
we can always edit profile. So if we edit the profile, Um, I can use a line. I can always tweak I click finish and yes with straight walls it worked the edit profile the problem is that when I have a curved wall and uh, now I can't edit profile so I can't adapt this curve uh, to this tilted floor uh, how can I do it? Okay, so first we have to start on level 10 and then I have to go up to level 30. This is the wall now. And how can I adapt this wall to this floor? Uh, so the only thing I know, or the only way I know how, how to do this is by using the void form. So we have to go to architecture, component, modeling place, and now we have to subtract a void form uh, from uh, this wall, from the original wall. So we have to make sure that we are using walls. If we are not using walls and walls, we can subtract two different elements. So if we are working with walls, I have to create a, a void form by extrusion using walls. We need to set the plane and we always set this at grid A0. Where is it? A0. Okay. And now I can pick this line and now I have to create a closed loop. So it doesn't matter how big it is. I only need to make sure that it's closed. I click finish. And this is the void element. A void element is always like yellowish, like this. And I have to extend this element beyond the wall I want to I want to cut. Now we finish model and we have this uh, warning. Okay, we need to use the cut geometry. So let's select cut. Then I have to select the wall. I want to subtract this one. Then I want to select the void. And there you go. Now finish. You see that I have created a wall. I've created a wall that is curved and it's tilted. So it has everything. By the way, I think there's something wrong with the scale because I'm out of the of the model and this can't happen. Okay. So this is the um, the way to do it, but I have to go back because I think I did something wrong when I uh, scaled the element. No, it's not about the scale. 
is just about the position of this. Yeah. So this is the, yeah, so I attached or I selected this column. Yeah. So this is the right place for the column. And now we have to make sure yeah, that everything is within Okay, so it doesn't go above this level. Okay, uh, now I have to do the same with uh, this wall. I'm going to use not a wireframe, but I'm going to use some transparency so that I can see this wall. So now I have to do the same with this and that wall. Uh, so first we will select these two walls. We will start on level 10. We will go up to level 30. And I'm going to do it again. Okay, so I'm going to create another void form and I will subtract this void form from the original wall here. Okay, let's do it. Uh, here, architecture, component, modeling place, wall. Void, extrusion. Uh, now I pick no, set, sorry, on grid A0, okay, pick this line and this line. Now I have to make sure that this is a closed loop. Finish. This is the void. Now I have to extend the void beyond the wall that I will subtract. And I can finish. I have to use now the cut geometry. So first I select the wall. Second, I select the void. And there we go. And finish. Okay, so now I'm creating this wall that has the right shape and the right a tilted floor. Uh, okay, so you can ask me, uh, do, do we have to do this every time? Oh, by the way, I changed this profile so I moved the wall and now I have to change this profile again. So that's why uh, the good thing of this void form is that if I move this wall now, I can move it. You see that the shape is adapting to to the floor. I don't have to subtract it again. Uh, just uh, it's different from from this one. So when I change the profile and I move it, then I have to adapt adapt the profile again. So I think I would be extending this. works. No, it doesn't. Okay, so I have to change this profile again. Edit okay, profile. I can move this down.
the thing is, do I have to do this every time? Uh, so if I'm making this out of uh, one, two, three, four different walls, uh, do I have to do it three different times? Uh, well, the answer might be yes, but with the other one, I will try something different. Okay, so I'm going to do it again, just for the sake of doing things many times. Uh, go to architecture, component, modeling place, walls. I have to set this on grid A0. I have to create a void form. I have to pick this and this. Now I can create another node loop. This is uh, the void form. I have to extend the void beyond the wall. And then I finish. Uh, I have to use that wall, the void. Okay, so let's try to do the same, but now I will try to create different walls and I will try to cut all the walls at the same time. Uh, we can uh, go to architecture, wall. Now we can start tracing this one. Now I use the tangent. storefront, I want the generic gate. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, there are six segments. And I'll go to the 3D view. I can select one, two, three, four, five and six segments, they will start at level 10 and they will go up to level 30. Okay. And now I have to cut all these segments with a void form. And is there a way to connect all these things uh, well, there are different ways. I can create a group. Okay, if I create a group, now all these is the same entity. So I select just, I click once, and now I select all the elements by creating the group. Okay, uh, will it work? I mean, if I create a void form and then I select the group, uh, will it do it at the, at the same time? Let's find out. So I'm going to do it the same again. Uh, architecture component, modeling place, wall. I have to create a void form. I have to set this at grid A0. Now I have to pick this, this line. Now, I want to create a closed loop. And you drag this in this direction. And now, will it work? Finish model, cancel, cut, select the, no, you can't select the group. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, okay, I'll do it again. So I, I select this, I select the void form, and now I have done this, finish. Yep, so now I select the group, but only this part of the wall is at the right uh, position. Okay, so groups work well because uh, just by clicking this, I can select if I want to delete, that's perfect because I delete this one and that's it. But I don't want to delete, I want to uh, create a void form and done this. Okay, what if I use a pin? Uh, pin is not working because what uh, pin does is to uh, is that you cannot move this element. Okay, so it's not you are not connecting things. It means that you are not moving. You can't move it. Okay, so pin uh, doesn't work. Link converted to a linked file based on the selected group and replace the selected group with the existing relic one. No, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, edit group, no, this is create similar, no, this is create group, this is what I have already done. Okay, so apparently the only way I know to do this is using a different uh, or copying the void form uh, many times. Okay, let's do it again. Back. Architecture, components, no, not place of component. Uh, component, modeling place, walls. Okay. Uh, void, extrusion, set, A0. And uh, big, big line. This one, that one, create closed loop. Finish. Select. And now I'm going to uh, copy this void form. going to copy this void form, uh, remove constraints uh, once and uh, twice and three times and four times. Okay. So I have uh, created like uh, one, two, three, five uh, void forms. I don't know how many uh, segments I have. I think it was five, I don't remember. And now I go all the way here. I click finish model, uh, but now I have to select cut. So I select the first part of the wall in this void form. Now I can select the second void form, finish model, cut this in the void form. Now I select this, extend, finish, cut, wall, in void form. And do it again, extend. Uh, what am I doing? Oh, finish, cancel, cut this segment, void form. And finally, yeah, I have another one here. So I Beyond. 
page cancel done okay i think it's faster i i, I know that none of the the systems it's uh, optimal but uh, well if you copy the void form and then you do the same you, you don't have to create the void form from scratch every time you you want to uh, do this okay and then having this as a group i think it works because i don't have to select different forms if i want to change materials or i want to change the color or i want to change whatever i can select this just uh, by one click i select all the all the segments okay um, now if i look at this I have created this shape and I can do the same with this. These are straight walls, so I think it will be easier. Uh, so let's do it. I can go to architecture, wall. I want the eight inch wall. I'm on level 20. So I'm going to start here and there. So we have this uh, tilt angle. Here, and we will have to uh, create some space for this uh, egg. Okay, I'm going to trim. We will work with the egg uh, next class, not today. And now, on the 3D view. Here we have fewer segments. Thank God. And now I can start creating all these things. Uh, level 10 up to level 30. And now we can either edit profile because those are straight walls or we can use the void form. Well, I think the, the void is a kind of fun. I'm going to do it. Okay, uh, architecture, component, I go near architecture, component, model, place, walls. I'm going to create a void form, extrusion, I'm going to set at 3k0. And I'm going to pick this. I'm going to Close the loop. Now I'm going to copy the void forms. How many times? One, two, three, four. Only four times. String one. I think three times would be enough. Yes, because the, the fourth wall is horizontal. So I move it. Uh, cut. Select the wall. Void form. Here, cut, select the wall, void, and finally, this one, cut, wall, void, and finish. Okay, so it's getting getting interesting, this model. Uh, 
and especially on level 20. Yeah, we have already created this. And now on level 20, uh, we have this, so we can start tracing those. Okay, so I'm going to create a wall and just uh, trace these walls here. Okay, you can start tracing all the toilets if you if you want. And here <coughs> we have this. Two boxes. This is for a staircase. This is a second staircase. And uh, yeah, make sure that you are working with the grids. Okay, here. And finally, we have this box here. It. And we go to the 3D view, and we have these boxes here. And these boxes start here, and they go probably up to level 40. You can select these walls. And finally, we have to close Probably land views level thirty. And now we have to close this box, so I need to go back to the to do this. And well, I think this should be up to you the way you close the the rest of the building uh, with uh, curtain walls. I think we can use the uh, store prompt. And then you can start closing the building.
So here is up to you. You have to close this, and then you have to close uh, this. I have selected two different uh, curtain walls here. I don't know if this is the right solution, but what I do know is that we have to start this wall. Uh, the top constraint is level 30, but the base offset has to be one foot up. Yeah. And this one has to be one foot up. Okay, so now this is closed here. Uh, here, uh, I think I deleted this curtain wall. Well, but I know that you have created this curtain wall in this direction. So there is a corner here with this curtain wall. And then you extend this curtain wall and there's another corner here. And it's up to you how you close this. Yeah, because we have this and apparently, yeah, there's another curtain wall here parallel to this wall. Okay, so this is up to you. So you have to close all this line. And uh, we are almost done with the model. I think this is a staircase. Yes, yeah, so this is a staircase that goes up in one of the sections. I yeah. In this section, you see that this is a staircase that goes up and ends up in this level. So probably we need a shaft or a, or a void in this. Okay, so let's do that. And I think that that is the last thing that we're going to do today. Okay, so we see that this staircase starts here so that staircase starts here and it goes all the way up there so we need to remove this part of the yeah we need a void here okay so we can work with um, Is a vertical opening that we need it on level 30. Vertical opening. Right face.
now with you know with Jack. And if we take a section to that opening, level 30, section. graphics floor it has to be solid Here we see this, this open. Okay, we're almost there. And now the more details that you are doing here, the best things you can do. Just uh, doing something like that with uh, transparency. I think it's a, it's a feeling because uh, yeah, you are uh, looking at a lot of things. Just by doing this transparency with this hidden line, uh, you can do that. Um, if we want to take good screenshots or good things, what can we do now? We can work with a section box. And now we can start defining different uh, plans. Now I'm going to remove the transparency. Move the section box. And now we can start uh, working with shadows. Uh, for this kind of views, I'm going to say duplicate and I'm going to name this level 30. And on level 30, I'm going to create, I want to see the crop view. And I want to hide all these things, hide view elements. Okay, so I think that's a good way to explain the building. Crop view. And now I want to duplicate views. That would be level 20. I'll duplicate. Level 10. And I'll be working with the now I'm going to work with the section box. And 
now with this section box, I'll try to go to the next level. So this is level 20, and on level 10, level 30, level 10, sorry, no, this is level 20, so level 10 will be one level down. And finally, level 20. And now we can start creating the sheets. So this is substructure. Superstructure. And what if we upload here level 10 no. we have to crop view and we have to hide section box and on level 20 we have to hide the section Please drag it from want to show the oh, rectangle okay and finally I think this is too big so I want to add a block that is something small like this Okay, it's getting better. And now I want a terrific render uh, to finalize today. Uh, so let's work level zero. And I want a camera. This corner.
Okay, so that will be the first uh, sheet of the final presentation. Uh, from 